guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm giving you my long promised what I'm doing different in my house because I went to Japan video. So a few weeks ago, I got home from an about two week trip to Japan. I went to visit my son. I took one of my daughters with me, my eight year old daughter, Noelle. And I went to visit my son who is living in Japan for nine months on a mission team. So we went to Sapporo, Japan, which is up in Northern Japan. It's a popular place for the Japanese to go to ski. A lot of Asian countries actually, we met a lot of Asians from around that come there to ski and enjoy winter sports. It's the second snowiest city in the world. And I always learn so much when I travel. In fact, I love, for my kids to travel, we're homeschoolers, and I think they learn so much about other cultures, but I always learn too so much about other cultures and great things that I can incorporate into our own lives when I travel. So I really enjoyed this trip, and I definitely brought some ideas home. Every time I visit anywhere outside the United States, I feel like I come home with the same inspiration, and that is to have less stuff. I don't feel like I even keep a lot of stuff. However, I'm always inspired by the more minimal approach. In Japan, it definitely was great inspiration for that. I did not get to go into Japanese homes, but I was with the home of the team living there. A lot of the bedrooms, or even some of the living rooms, actually, the living area rooms too, they have massive closets. And I'm talking about very deep, very wide, a lot of room between shelves. And so, one thing I discovered is that a lot of the Japanese mattresses will be just on the floor and they will, they're trifold mattresses because I went shopping. So I know this happens in a lot of places where maybe some of them do keep them up lifted on a bed, but a lot of them do use the floor and then they fold that mattress up and slide it into their cupboards as well as their bedding. So the whole room gets picked up in the morning instead of just making their bed, they're actually like hiding it all away. I love that because you're not seeing anything then Although it is very impressive, it says a lot about um, the agility of the people to be able to get on and off the floor all the time. So I think a lot of us recognize that um, some traditional Japanese culture is to sit and eat on the floor. But um, yeah, getting onto the floor for your bed and getting off even when you're older is very, very impressive. So I'm not saying that I know a lot about how the Japanese live based on the home I was in that is all full of North Americans, but there are some things that we learned in that, and one of them was about putting the bedding away all together. So even the fridge inside the floor, which I showed you guys, is just more an example of how things can be hidden away, put away, and then your space just looks minimal and wide open. For me personally, I know that helps me a lot with my focus when I'm not looking at chaotic spaces, but it's more, um, put away and taken care of and you're looking at clear wide open spaces or just cleared off spaces cleared off counters Those kind of things make me very happy compared to the clutter that being said Solo and I have talked a number of times about switching our master bedroom with the ki little kids room Which is the loft I am standing in the loft right now You can see our TV in the living room down there behind me um, What was making me orange is this way the room lighting but behind me is a view of our property and we have the sliding glass door and this little balcony out here up in this loft so we've talked a number of times about switching with the kids the little kids and giving them our bedroom uh, there is a bathroom in the bedroom that's where our shower is and all that and the kids always use that they come in and out of our room it has been a hard decision because we definitely lose privacy to giving them the room with the door but after being in japan i realized okay i need a space that's what i'm missing i think the one thing that's been frustrating me a lot having a place for those kids to go and shut the door and then also keep their stuff behind a door would be huge so we did it when when i came home a few days later, Solo left town and Luca and I switched the whole thing. Solo had agreed to it by then. And uh, he actually thought it would be a great idea and it has been. Let me tell you, this is now our bedroom. Oh, thank you. So it's actually given us a lot more space. It's a more spacious room. We were kind of hitting our shins on that bed all the time. So we were worried there's some cords there from internet. We're getting rid of these big shelves, I've slowly been cleaning them all off. They had the kids, some kids' toys, a lot of books, games, and stuff. We just decided on these books to keep out for now. Everything else is going in storage. So this big shelf, this huge shelf, 
the internet was up on there so we're kind of moving those out we're not quite done with the project and only those two small shelves of kids books will stay so we're going to have even more space over here even more floor space but we have a little chair there i'm going to get a mirror to go behind it because we haven't had a place to put one of our mirrors from our other house to stand on the ground but as you can see it is a lot more spacious and it's been nice so the kids bunk beds um, are in our old master bedroom and they have a lot of floor space there too our school carts are in there we don't keep a lot of toys in there but they ha each have a few things that are very special to them they can play with but we keep a lot of our toys in our garage so we just pull out what we want and we can bring it up here they can play with the door closed it's actually worked out very very well there is a tv there in there because we had a tv in our room and so we haven't moved that or anything couple times we've even used it like okay let's do a little movie in your room <laughs> just a few times but mostly we just keep the remotes out of there so there's no way they're watching it unless we know about it and we're turning it on for them so we are in the middle of the house our bedroom feels like it is in the middle of the house benefits we hear everything we have older kids that are coming and going um, they come back late at night sometimes we're never wondering because we hear it all <laughs> um, downfalls we hear it all <laughs> We don't have maybe as much privacy because we don't have a door to shut. Another benefit is we have this lovely view. It is incredible. Right now it's like 4 or 5 p.m. and it's dusk but and snowing. We see even a gorgeous view at night right from our bed. We have curtains here but we haven't closed them once since we've moved our room in here. We've just really enjoyed the view. So we finally hung a curtain you can see there um, over our bathroom door because there was no door there for the shower room then there's a door for the toilet room there's sinks on both sides um, we did hang that curtain which helps so we can sneak in there early in the morning and get ourselves ready without waking up the little kids uh, but yeah J japan definitely helped me think outside the box that way and i have really appreciated just having this clean space up here quiet space i'm definitely making my bed every day um, because i see it more often it used to be i'd leave the room and never go back to the end of the day but i see it all the time now and so i love making it making it look beautiful along that vein of minimalism i have put so much more stuff away in the garage or gotten rid of since i've got home gotten home i just have seen everything in a new light and if it's not being used or used well or used enough it goes so it either goes out to the garage where we can pull it in if we want it or if it really is not used much it goes away so i i love that inspiration of just cleaning out of course the beginning of the year and after christmas and some new toys always is good inspiration for cleaning stuff out so i've been doing that aggressively we put away so many of the games we had that were just making a mess and they weren't really playing with those are in storage until we have a more covered space when they don't have toys they'll just find what they do have and make a mess of it um, so we're encouraging them okay go get a toy bring it in <laughs> instead of and why, my, why not just put away those games they'll be fine I let the kids pick out what they wanted to keep out but they had no problem putting some of them in storage for the year so okay next change you're gonna think I am nuts <laughs> we stopped using our dishwasher yes that's right we have a working dishwasher and we are not using it this one really truly was inspired by Japan and the house I was staying at, they had no dishwasher. They had a tiny, tiny dishwasher, way too tiny to use, to be practically used for the 10 people living in that house. So if they're doing something outside of regular meal times, they wash their own dishes. At meal times, they had a schedule of different people that were on to wash and clean up the kitchen. I got to thinking of times in the past when our dishwasher has been broken not functioning and our kitchen always stayed cleaner when that happened and i remember even commenting about it on camera before like i don't understand but for some reason our kitchen's cleaner so i just decided when i came home we should just try this for a little bit i have been home three or four weeks now and i think we've used the dishwasher three times total each time company was about to come over and we were behind on dishes and we just threw them all in the dishwasher the last time was two weeks ago already so that was all within a week the first week of getting used to it so what we did is we bought um this nice i got this on amazon it's a nice bamboo i think drying rack it holds a lot and then we have this drying pad that we had before under it and then we have another one we throw up there for the big pots and pans i think this is probably true for most large families but you can inform me if i'm wrong if you have a large family but we end up washing so many of the pots and pans anything big even big dishes by hand because it would take up so much space in the dishwasher it's useless 
because our meals take up the dishwasher, like the regular plates and cups and silverware. And so we were already washing a lot by hand, but then things got backed up often because the dishwasher was running. Our dishwasher does take a long time to run at this house. I know I have talked a lot in here of, on here about keeping my sink cleaned out because this we're really adjusting to the smaller kitchen and it is not easy. We, before we had a massive sink with no divider. Now we have just like a normal size sink with a divider in the middle. And so it's been a challenge. So when I came home, I was told the kids, okay, I was just at a house of 10 people. There were 13 when Katie and Noelle and I came. We didn't use the dishwasher at all. Everybody just washed their own dishes. So let's just try that here. After dinner, everybody wash their own dishes. If you're cooking outside or eating outside of the regular meal time, that was already a rule, but it was not always happening. Wash your own stuff. And um, when we're doing meals, my, one of my children that was in charge of loading the dishwasher, she comes and dries the dishes and puts them away while I'm washing um, after everybody else has washed their own. So it's only the little kids stuff that I'm washing in the pots and pans, which I was already doing. So guess what? Our house has stayed cleaner. I mean, our kitchen, <laughs> our kitchen sink. I don't know what it is. The dishwasher is just like an extra step we don't need. <laughs> I know a lot of people use their dishwashers to actually they just wash them by hand. I, I've seen that a lot. And then people will use the dishwasher as a drying rack, which I think is wonderful, smart, great idea. But our kitchen is already very small. And when the dishwasher is open, we actually all hit our shins on it. Um, you can see the footprint. Oh, I didn't even know there were dishes in there. There's just a few, how funny. Um, those would be sitting there for a long time because we have not run it for weeks. So I don't know who loaded it up, but <laughs> it's probably been in there a while. But as you can see with all of us, 12 of us living in the house right now, uh, that thing is just in the way. So instead we have a clean sink. Does this have dishes on it often? Yes, it does. Does it bother me? It really does not bother me at all. I don't mind. And this thing actually folds up flat. That's why I picked this one. Um, if we decide not to do this, uh, over there it fits glasses. There's one in there right now. If we decide not to do this, we can always, or we want to hide it away, no problem, but it's actually pretty when it's out, so I don't mind it out. So we are currently building a home that's much bigger, and we'll have actually two sinks. I can't wait. Oh, a sink in the pantry and a sink in the kitchen. And my plan was always to do like the normal dishes in the kitchen and then put the big pots and pans that need to soak in the large sink in the pantry um, just to have a space. If we could divide up who's washing, like have two washers, or rinsers or whatever it would go much much faster but in the kitchen sink I was going to have at least one dishwasher but a space for a second if we ever decided to put a second one in so a cupboard um, that was big and plumbed for an, a second dishwasher now I'm wondering if I just want to have two big cupboards that are plumbed but just leave it for now and go without because I'm really liking this so <laughs> we'll see this one is um, we're putting a pin in it See how it goes and I'll keep you updated. Could you go without a dishwasher or do you already? Okay, this one actually started before I left for Japan, our toaster broke. We had a four slot toaster and we're always waiting for toast anyway. And it broke down and we had been looking for a while on Black Friday, we decided to order a toaster oven. It fits in the space that our microwave was in. So we put our microwave away. Did we throw our microwave away? No, we did not. It is in the garage in storage. We could pull it back out, but we are experimenting with using a toaster oven and not a microwave. Although this started before Japan, it was encouraging to see a lot of people living without a microwave <laughs> for two weeks. Um, of course, we see that other places we travel to often. And you just adjust. Uh, the adjustment period has not been that easy, honestly. We did use a microwave. Okay, we thought we had several solutions for things, but microwaves are way faster. now. Whether microwaves are good for you or not is a debate I don't really care to be a part of, but I will say that this makes your food taste far better than a microwave ever did. Reheating leftovers tastes better. It's just, we could have just used the oven, no problem, but we needed a toaster anyway and it's convenient to have a second space. Our oven is actually not very big compared to what you were used to. It looks like a normal size, but inside it does not fit much. So to have extra space was helpful. This toaster oven has an air fry setting. Toast, it takes six slices of toast easily. It has a bake, broil, roast, pizza, reheat, warm, slow cook, and dehydrate. So it does a lot of things. It takes longer to reheat things, probably three or four times as long as the microwave took. But like I said, it tastes much better. We've been learning how to uh, just put like chicken thighs in there and 
fry them up on the air fry setting or the roast setting. They come out crispy and amazing in 20 minutes. Um, but yeah, heating leftovers is not as convenient. Another thing my kids used it for a lot is making chai, which is our Kenyan tea in the morning. But we did upgrade, we had a plastic, which was not awesome at all. It was very old, it was from my grandma. It was a plastic tea kettle thing, a kettle, water boiling kettle. And so at Black Friday, we got those two things. We upgraded to the glass one, stainless steel and glass. And so for the kids chai, they've been just heating the water. That has been no problem. Add in some cold milk, works out great. Otherwise we make chai on the stove. Um, so it's really just the leftovers. That's been the hardest thing to adjust to. We're not fully adjusted, I will say that. Um, sometimes I hear kids being frustrated like, oh, how do I heat this up? <laughs> we have to go back to heating things on the stove or sticking them in here. And I might need to get some baking dishes because when we put our plates in there, they get very hot. So we're using hot pads to pull things out. So that one I'm putting a pin into. I've told the kids, hey, listen, I'm not giving this microwave away. If we hate it, we'll just bring it back and switch it out. And we'll save this and use it in the new house when we have plenty of space for both. But for right now, we don't have space for both. So it's one or the other. <laughs> Japan was good inspiration and gave me the bravery to try it out. Number four was living in that house with a team of all young adults and then three kids that were not a part of it. But <laughs> I loved their chart where they had a certain day for each meal on there and so I thought hey let's just try this in the new year love trying new things when it comes to home management some of the kids there the young adults there have had to learn to cook when they were in that environment Our, my kids do mostly know how to cook but I thought well not why not use them more regularly and consistently for cooking a few things so I made my own meal chart but we went ahead and did breakfast lunch snacks and dinners and snacks is where I put the little girls that are eight six and five on a rotating basis. We don't have snack on Sunday. And then some of my kids, I gave them each one lunch and one breakfast a week where they're just in charge of preparing lunch or breakfast, whatever they would like to prepare for everyone. I did that with my just turned 17 year old Luca, my 15 year old Micah, my about to turn 13 year old Tori, my 11 year old Eli, and then dinners, my oldest daughter, she's 18. She is leaving the country soon and she didn't have a zone. So she opted to make a couple dinners and a breakfast per week anyway. So she's on the schedule. Otherwise it's me a lot and solo once. The chart is just mixing things up a little, making it kind of fun and different. Cause that's always nice to do. Beginning of the year or anytime. I honestly like to mix it up and make it different anytime. Guys, if you are looking to do some new things, be inspired, I do have a home management course. I don't talk about it all the time. I forget a lot, but I made a course last year and it's great. I've gotten such great feedback from people who have taken it. Uh, it's a way to just get a lot of inspiration of how you can make your home run better, involve your kids, all of that jazz. So I will leave a link for it down below and you know what, I'm gonna put it on sale for a week. <laughs> so if you wanna check that out, Look in the link down below. And I know you can get some great inspiration for what might work for your home. Guys, thank you for watching today's video and seeing what changes we've made after my inspirational trip to Japan. We'll talk to you guys in the next video. Bye.